Hi everyone, it's Grace from Esri. In this video, we will follow the Explore Data tutorial in ArcGIS Pro. In this tutorial, you will work with an attribute table to display and format fields of interest, use analysis tools to query data and export statistics, and create a chart to represent information from the attribute table visually. You can follow the full written instructions for this tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation. Let's get started. I've opened ArcGIS Pro and signed in to my ArcGIS Online account. We'll start by opening the Explore Data project package. Make sure the portal is set to ArcGIS Online and search for Explore Data V360. Open the one with the authoritative badge. The project opens to a map of New Zealand's regions labeled with their names. On the Map tab, make sure the Explore tool is selected. You can click on any region to view more information about it in a pop-up. The pop-up displays attributes for the region including its name, area, and livestock counts for various years. There is also an image URL field that stores a link to an online image. This will be used later in the tutorial. Close the pop-up pane and open the region's layer attribute table. The table contains the same fields you just saw in the pop-up. Click any row header in the table and note that the corresponding region is selected on the map. Click Clear to deselect the record. On the Map tab, click the Select Tool drop-down arrow and click Rectangle. You can now draw a box over multiple features on the map to select them, and the corresponding records will be selected in the table. If you want to only see the selected features, click Show Selected Records. To return to the previous view, click Show All Records. On the Map tab, click Attributes to open the Attributes pane. When you click a region in the pane, the location flashes on the map, and its attributes are shown in the lower half of the pane. Press the Control key and click a second region. Now the pane compares the values of the two selected regions. In this case, they have different values. Close the Attributes pane and clear the selection. Back in the Attribute table, locate the Sheep 2023 field. Right-click the field heading and sort the field in descending order to reveal which regions contain the most sheep in 2023. There are some fields in the regions table that we can hide to reduce clutter in our attribute table and pop-ups. We can also change the field aliases so they make more sense. Make sure the regions layer is selected in the contents pane and click the data tab. Click fields to open the fields view for the regions table. In the Visible column, uncheck the box in the column heading to turn off visibility for all fields in the table. Now we can check the boxes for only the fields we want, which include the name, area, and livestock count values for 2023. In the Alias column, double-click the Reg Name alias to make it editable. Replace it with Name and press the Enter key. Repeat this to change the Area field to Area Square Kilometers. In the Number Format column, double-click the cell for the Area field and click the Ellipsis button to the side to open the Number Format dialog box. Change the rounding to two decimal places, check the Show Thousand Separator checkbox, and click OK. Format the Beef Cattle, Dairy Cattle, and Sheep fields to Show Thousand Separators as well. When you are done editing the fields, click Save to preserve your changes and close the fields view. In the Regions table, right-click any row header and click Pop-up. Note that there are now fewer fields visible, the aliases have been updated, and thousand separators are used for the numeric fields. Close the Pop-up. If you want to know which regions are major producers of both sheep and beef cattle, you can find out with an attribute query. On the Map tab, click Select by Attributes. The input rows parameter is correctly set to Regions, and the selection type is New Selection. Using the Clause Builder, change the field to Sheep 2023. Click the Is Equal To drop-down arrow and select Is Greater Than or Equal To and type 1 million in the empty text box. This clause will select regions that have 1 million or more sheep. Click Add Clause to build a second clause. A logical operator is added to connect the two clauses. It defaults to AND, which will require both clauses to be true for a region to be selected. This is correct in this case. 
Set the clause to select regions that contain 500,000 or more beef cattle in 2023. Click OK and note that three regions are selected on the map, as well as in the table. Clear the selection. The Regions table contains livestock values for each region, but no totals or statistics. If we want to find out whether the North Island or the South Island has more sheep, we can select the features on each island and explore statistics in a data engineering view. On the Map tab, click the Select Tool drop-down arrow and click Polygon. Click once to start drawing a polygon that encloses or intersects all the regions on the South Island and no regions on the North Island. Double-click to complete the polygon. There should be seven features selected, which is confirmed in the status bar below the map. In the Regions table, click Show Selected Records to display only the South Island regions. Make sure the Regions layer is selected in the Contents pane and click the Data tab. Click Data Engineering to open the Data Engineering view for the Regions layer. Data engineering views present statistics on your attribute data and allow you to perform a wide range of analytical operations on your fields. Click Add All Fields and Calculate. We can see on the status bar that the statistics are based only on the seven selected records. Right-click the Alias column and click Freeze slash Unfreeze so it stays in view as you scroll through the view. Scroll to the right and locate the Sum column. We can see there are more than 12.3 million sheep on the South Island. Make the Regions table active and click Switch Selection to select the nine regions on the North Island instead. Back in the Data Engineering view, click Calculate to update the statistics. The North Island contains approximately 12 million sheep, which is slightly fewer than the 12.3 million on the South Island. Let's export the statistics for the North Island to a standalone table. In the Data Engineering view, click Statistics Panel Settings and select Export Statistics as Table. For the input fields, remove names since there are no useful statistics here. Under Output Tables, click the Field Types drop-down arrow and select Numeric to ensure all fields in the output table are formatted as numeric fields. Change the output name to North Island Statistics. Under Output Statistics, hover over the Field Type Statistic and click Remove. Repeat this step for the following statistics. These statistics may be useful for advanced analysis, but we don't need them in our simple project. Hover over the Sum statistic, click the Row Identifier button, and drag it to be just under the alias. Click OK to run the tool. In the Contents pane, under Standalone Tables, right-click the North Island Statistics table and click Open. Notice that we've already done this for the South Island statistics. Close all open tables as well as the data engineering view, clear the selection, and navigate to the New Zealand bookmark. Now that we've explored some statistics for the regions layer, let's create a chart to visualize sheep distribution. Make sure the regions layer is selected in the contents pane and click the data tab. Click create chart and select bar chart. This opens the Chart Properties pane and an empty chart view. On the Data tab, click the Category or Date drop-down arrow and select Name to show the region names on the chart's x-axis. Set the aggregation to None. Under Numeric Fields, click Select, check the Sheep 2023 checkbox, and click Apply. The chart updates to show the number of sheep in each region. Set Sort to Y-axis Descending and switch to the General tab. Set the chart title to New Zealand Sheep by Region in 2023 and press Enter. Change the X-axis title to Region Name and the Y-axis to Number of Sheep. On the Axes tab, change the Label Character Limit to 20 so that the region names are no longer cut off. Hover over a bar on the chart to view the region name and the number of sheep in the region. Drag a box that intersects the five tallest bars. The corresponding map features are also selected. Three of the five regions with the most sheep are on the South Island and two are on the North Island. Clear the selection and go to the Format tab. Click the Text Elements tab and change the color for the x-axis labels to fur green. Repeat this for the y-axis labels. The chart is complete so we can close it as well as the Chart Properties pane. You can reopen the chart at any time from the Contents pane. 
We looked at the default pop-ups for the regions table earlier, but we can customize them to include more information. Right-click the regions layer and click configure pop-ups. On the map tab, make sure the explore tool is selected. You can click on any region to view more information about it in a pop-up. The upper part of the pop-up is a tree view that lists the identified features. The lower part shows the currently configured pop-up elements, including the title and the five visible fields of the attribute table. Close the pop-up. In the Configure Pop-ups pane, click Chart. Hover over the new chart element and click Edit Pop-up element. Set the title as Livestock Comparison and delete the default caption. In the Fields list, select the three livestock fields for 2023. Click the back arrow and exit the chart settings. Click Image to add an image to the pop-up. Edit the pop-up element. Delete the default title and caption. Click in the Source URL input box, click the Field drop-down arrow, and select the Image URL field. Now when you click a region on the map, the linked image in the corresponding table record will be displayed in the pop-up. Click back and click on any region in the map. You can see the pop-up now includes a chart as well as an image. For more detailed steps, follow the full written tutorial in the ArcGIS Pro documentation, linked in the description for this video.